So, good evening guys. Team Panda po ulit. Mga kasin dyan sa kaya. Dito sa mga groupmates ko. Ako si Jasmine Thompson. Mikey Villegas. And yung cameraman mo si Joe Pucci. Next one. So, kung muna nga ulit, kasi nandito kami ngayon sa Mayo Live. Nag-research ko rin ang topic ko ngayon for sampling. Pero okay may nga. First, sometimes I can discuss kami sa simple random sampling. So basically, Um, every member of this population um, has an equal chance of being selected for a sample. Um, sinasabi rin nila na ito yung best na sampling kasi may equal yung chance na makuha yung, yung sa population. And then, um, yun nga lang, hindi na siyang gamitin kasi sinasabi nila na this is yung practical down to the level. So, so, here's a basic example. Ito yung population ko yung mga gadget. So, hindi ko alam ko, ipikita ko. Tukuha na lang kung gusto ko. Ito yung napili ko na samples. Using... Samples na random. Masamble na yung sample. Ngayon naman, it's a stratified sample. So, pag performance na stratified sample, in-speed yung population sa non-overlapping years. Tapos, after nun, kagawin na yung simple run ng sampling. Ito yung example. Yung main population natin is gadgets, which is cellphone. And in-split natin into two groups, which is virtual keypads and physical keypads. Dito, virtual yung keypads, which is in-attach na lang. Tapos dito naman, dito, yung ginagamit ko pa yung physical, yung pag input. So, dun nga, kailangan mo yung simple random sample. So, gagawin ko yung simple random sample. Dito sa dalawang group sa ito. So, yun. Pili lang ako. Okay. So the next is systematic sampling. So this is the systematic sampling. You just choose that and individual or any kind of object in the chosen population. So it's usually uh, convenient when you cannot obtain a frame for the population you wish to study. Uh, so next. Here's an example. I'm looking for an article in the newspaper. So there are a lot of newspapers here, as you can see. So by using systematic sampling, I'm just gonna uh, find uh, get a number in my head. So for example, I want to get uh, I got number four. So here, I'm just gonna choose every fourth newspaper I see to get the articles I like. So first, one, two, three, four. So here's my first. Then one, two, three, four. Second, one, two, three, four. Third. So I'm gonna get my articles from those newspapers. So I'll be talking about convenient sampling. So in this type of sampling, uh, you get the easiest way to just get your sample, the population of your sample. So, uh, so for example, if this guy is closer to me, and then I'll get him. And then most of the time, they're voluntary. But there's a problem with this kind of sampling. Uh, there can be a difference between uh, the people who are or not. So, as you can see, uh, you're not sure that your information is uh, consistent since, uh, for example, um, if you're going to get survey from smokers, uh, you might get like information only from non-smokers or those who smoke little. Long. So it's just not consistent, unlike other types of sampling. The sample size for 
any study depends on the required precision. It depends on the population size and the nature of the population. Procedural aspects such as time, budget and resources available will dictate the size as will publishing aspects in terms of importance placed on the results by the audience. The main ways of deciding on sample size are by calculation, by using accepted industry standards, by budget, this budget may be a budget of time or money available, or by building analysis cells. The calculation method takes account of the population size and the expected accuracy of the results. And in theory, this is the best way to arrive at a sample size. However, in practice, other methods are used. Many sample sizes for research studies are decided on the basis of what is feasible within the time available or within the budget, the money available. The final method, building analysis cells, means that the sample size is built up from the minimum numbers expected to be seen in each analysis cell.